Okay. So as of right now, you have two ways to derive a function. What are your two ways to derive a function? The definition of a derivative. Okay, and the definition of a derivative will always work. You can use that anytime. So if you can't figure out a trick, you can use the definition of a derivative to, to so write. It's kind of like the quadratic first. Exactly. Cool. Um, the other rule is the one we just were working on. The basic rule. Okay, so the basic rule is awesome as long as things are written in standard form and very basic. Okay, well, that's generally not the case. Um, so we need a couple more tricks. Okay, so let's see. Whoa. Um, this starts out by kind of just uh, refreshing our skills on deri deriving. This is not new information. Uh, the derivative of any constant is is zero. Okay, so the one thing I want you guys to do is, even though you already know this, notice the notation. Okay, this says df. What do you think they mean by df? Kind of like dy, derivative of the function. So do you see how up above it has f of x? It's not a y, it's an f of x. So we're deriving f in terms of x. The dx is the equation that you're going to have, so it's going to have an x in it. So just start to notice that notation because eventually that's going to become very important. So if we derive a constant, c being a constant, that's zero. Do you recognize this one? It looks like something from stats. Huh. Yeah, that's like the basic rule, like what we were just literally doing. Take the x, the n, you put it in the front, and you subtract one from the exponent. The only difference is there's no C in front of it for this particular example. So if you drive it, do you want to write that down? Are we supposed to? I wouldn't. Oh. I feel like if that doesn't make any sense to you, why would you put it in your notes? Okay. It would be not helpful. So general power rule. The general power rule is exactly the same as the basic rule. So I've heard the words general power rule, basic rule. Um, those are referring to the same thing. Depends on the textbook. Um, that's just, uh, yeah, let's not go there. Let's just keep going. <laughs> it's like more, more notation stuff. See, calculus can be really uh, confusing the more variables they throw into it. Um, throw this down in your notes. I have no idea why they put this into this section. It is completely like random. But the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now you know. Okay, and we're not going to say, well, why is it e to the x? We're going to say, thank you, Math God. That is awesome. We're going to move forward with that great information. That's it. Got it, Mike? Yeah, I wrote it down. Okay. Perfect. Everybody good? Good? Okay. So you might see an e to the x in there now. All right, here we go. Now this is the good stuff. This is today's stuff. Okay, today's uh, first rule, I'm going to give you two new rules today. The first rule is the product rule. Now, um, this right here, this textbook gives three different definition it three different definitions of the exact same thing. Um, in my opinion, the one that looks the most straightforward is this one. So I would suggest you putting down this into your notes for the product rule. I wouldn't put the other ones in. I feel like there's a lot of variables going on. Well, I'll explain it though. So I'm going to put this into like nulty terms so it becomes a little bit more straightforward. Mm. Oh. What? My U's and V's are basically the same. There's a lot of both of those, so 
Oh yeah, that's that. why that's why you should write the one that I highlighted instead of that one. Yeah. There's two highlighted. <laughs> what? what? I'm reading I... the one on the top. It says product rule. What do you mean no sense? It's a rough night. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sleep well. I Okay, so let me talk about the, the idea of the product rule. So anytime you hear something about a product, what is happening? There's things that are being multiplied together. Okay, so the product rule is used when you have two quantities that are being multiplied together. Okay, so generally they're separated by parentheses, so such as x plus 2 times 5x minus 3. Okay, two quantities that are being multiplied. Are we ready? Can I slide over? No, hold on. Hold on, Chaz is still writing. Yeah. All right, we're good. Okay, good. Okay, so this is what I'm going to call the product rule. Okay, so let's say our function, so I'm going to do d dx and we're gonna have two things that are being multiplied okay I'm gonna call them the first and the second okay so we have a first quantity and a second quantity yeah yeah so definitely write this down okay ready so when you do the derivative of two quantities that are being multiplied. You start with the first. So you say first d second. What do I mean by when I say d? The derivative. So yeah. first times the derivative of the second plus the second d first. Okay, so when I say product rule, I'm going to say first d second plus second d first. Did you write it down? Yep. Okay, everybody good? Check, wrote down, we can progress. All right, moving on. So here's my example, we'll call it number one. So let's say my function is uh, 2x squared plus 5 times uh, 3x minus, no, sorry, 3x squared minus 2x. Okay, so I have two quantities, very obvious, that are being multiplied together. So, can somebody identify the first quantity? Okay, good. So, this is my first. And which one is my second? The second one. Ah, yes, yes, the second one. All right, here we go. We're going to derive this. Okay, so it starts out as the first. So, what is my first? 2x squared plus 5. The second. What is the derivative of my second? Minus 2 plus the second. D first. What does the D over DX mean at the beginning of each derivative? I know the list. Derivative over derivative of X. The top is the, the what you're deriving. The bottom is, is what it's in terms of. I'm talking about the equation. So am I. The top is like, so what we just did is we did, um, this notation would be df because we're deriving f and the variable involved is an x. So this is df dx. Okay, so all I would have left to do is simplify this. I could potentially put this into standard form and FOIL it out. I will tell you that when you're simplifying with calculus, uh, you never are expected to FOIL. 
Okay, you're expected to distribute through a quantity, but you don't ever have to FOIL. Okay, so do you see how the first term, I have two quantities that are potentially needing to be FOILed if I was going to put them into standard form? I don't have to touch that. The second one, I can distribute the 4x through. Okay, so I could potentially uh, leave this quantity. It wouldn't be against the rules to FOIL this if you didn't like the way this looks. Whoa. But you don't need to. So there, there becomes a point when in calculus they kind of say, hey, you know what you're doing? We understand that this is equivalent to other stuff. Okay. That's the answer. Uh, the derivative of the first. So this is your first, this is your d second, plus second, d first. What's the derivative of five? I took the derivative of both. Um, because in calculus, you're not expected to FOIL. Like once you've come up with the answer, you don't have to FOIL things. You are expected to distribute like um, distribute like the four x through, but there becomes a point when you could simplify like all day long. It could take forever. Okay, no, I mean, why did you only do the derivative of the first? Yeah, like the first one. The first one. Um, I think so. But I did also derive the second. Okay. How come you don't do the first? How come what? You only do the second. How come you don't foil? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. You can simplify it if you want, if it hurts your being. All right, should we do one more just to make sure we have this? All right, I'm going to use this example that they give to us since we just found out a new derivative. We're going to derive this piece right here. Okay. So on this one, I have a first and I have a second. Okay, what one? Which one is my first? One over x. And is one over x in a place that I can derive? Can I derive one over x as it's written? So I have to rewrite it. That would be the same as x to the negative first. Okay, the second quantity is fine the way it's written. Okay, so does everybody see that my first? is the x to the negative 1, and my second is my x squared plus e to the x. Oh, this is another problem. <laughs> All right, are you ready? <laughs> okay. It start out with it starts with the first. What's my first? X to the negative one. X to the negative one. D second. What's the derivative of the second? Two x. What's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x. Good. Look at yeah. you guys learning that. Nice. Plus the second. D first. What's the derivative of the first? Negative x to the negative second. Are you okay with that? So you're only deriving one part of the equation in each section. Right. Okay, we're good. That's what we're on. Okay, now this one I'm expected to uh, distribute these values through. Okay, so what is x to the negative first times 
two X. We're not foiling. We are distributing. Does everybody see how I have an X over an X, so therefore the X's cancel out, and I'm left with two? Okay, what is X to the negative first times E to the X? E to the X over X. Okay, second one, what is negative X to the negative 2 times X squared? Negative 1. Because remember, you add your exponents and the X's are going to go away, right? You have 0 X's there. Okay, and then what is e to the x times negative x to the negative 2? Whoa. E to the x over x squared. Okay, we can combine the 2 and the 1. So this would actually be 1 plus e to the x over x minus e to the x over x squared. And that's as far as you would go. I can't get there. <laughs> I don't get your math. I don't get it. What part are you not getting? Are you getting not getting the derivative part or the simplifying part? The simplifying part. Are you lost on how we got a 2? Yeah, how'd you get 2? Ah, so do you see how I have x to the negative 1, which is the same as 1 over x, okay. times 2 to the x? So 2 to the x over x? <laughs> 2 to the x over x. Oh, I thought you said 2 to the x. 2 x. I might have said that. <laughs> Alright, ready for a second rule? No. Oh, what? Yeah. Can't we just focus on one at a time? Oh, no. Nope. Do we do one a day, one rule a day. This is a key calculus. Nope. Trust me, I know that. I'm excited. What's that supposed to be? I feel like that was a throwing shade at me. Can't tell this. Can't tell this. Can't tell this. Can't tell this. What? Another class. If I know that class, take that class. I would have done. What are you talking about? Other class. Oh, I'm going to take. You don't have an option to take that class. All right, quotient rule. Write it down. Hurry up. <laughs> down. <laughs> Just down a little bit. <laughs> are you guys done yet? No. You guys are going to like this one. Oh, <laughs> you guys really need to change your attitudes. Yeah, I love yes. that. Yes. I freaking love that. Yeah. That's better. <laughs> I'll make that, but it actually makes sense. <laughs> sure, we can. I like multiplying fractions and stuff. Oh, good. We'll do some of that too. No, just that. I don't like doing anything other than that. Oh, but, this, but it's like multiplying. What? What was that math word? Like that's so math. Accelerated mass? Yeah. <laughs> All right, you ready for this one? Let's do it. Okay, so quotient rule. What's happening? You're dividing. You're dividing. Very simple. Okay, we have a top and we have a bottom. You ready for the nullity rule? Let's do it. Wait a minute. Like, right this one, yeah. this might, um, yeah. Wait, is this one that involves H's? Yeah, oh, you heard about this one? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so our function is going to be, uh, we're going to derive. We'll derive it in terms of X. Okay, we're going to have something on the top. We're going to call it high. And the something on the bottom is a hoe. Now, I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but everybody remembers it. Triggering. 
Hi, Here we go. You always start with the ho. So it goes ho, d high, minus high d ho, over ho squared. It's like the alphabet. Okay, so if you can remember this, you can always use the quotient rule. Ho d high, minus high d ho, over the whole squared. <laughs> I doubt it. Like I hate that. <laughs> Oh, that grinds my gears. <laughs> I hate that. Okay, done? All right, here we go. Here's our first example. Okay, we got a top and we got a bottom. Can somebody identify what the high is? He's square. The entire thing on the top. The high is... T squared, T squared minus, minus one. one. Okay, so what's the hoe? There you go. All right, here we go. So what do you start with? You start with the hoe. No, it's Heidi Ho minus Cody High. No. Okay, what is my hoe? T cubed plus one. T cubed plus one. D high, what's my derivative of my high? T. D stands for derivative. No. Derivative of the high. T squared, what's the derivative of T squared? 9T. Oh, it's 2. 2T. 2 goes in the front. Wait, it's Cody high now, it's high D high. Okay, so what's my high? T squared minus 1. D ho, what's the derivative of the ho? 3t squared. 3t squared. All over the ho squared. Okay, now on the top I do have to simplify. So I'm going to distribute the 2t through the top piece. You ready? Yes. Like low, but ho. <laughs> High, low. <laughs> Alright, I'm moving forward without you. You guys are too slow. Okay, I'm going to distribute the negative and also the 3t squared. So it's going to be minus 3t to the fourth plus 3t squared. Never touch the bottom, by the way. Do not ever, ever, ever foil a bottom. Is there anything on the top I can combine as like terms? How many t to the fourth do I now have? Negative. I have a 3t squared, and I have a 2t. Would you like to do another example? So that's the answer? That's it? Yeah, that's the answer. That's it. That's it? Come on, it's easy. Right. I'm glad we agreed. Give me the test right now. All right, let's do it. I don't have a test, but I have a worksheet.